This is David Hofmeister's Unwind Your Mind Back to God Read by Tarana Singh In today's episode, we continue Unlearning the World with Book 2. In Chapter 5, this is Section 3 Upsets, Values and Beliefs David Does anybody have anything they are wrestling with other than communication? We can go into that. Friend For me it is about communication and control. It seems I have control issues lately. David How have they been expressing themselves? How are you perceiving them? Friend, there are a bunch of things that seem to disturb my peace. First, I was irritated by things that happened at the restaurant where I work. We were so busy and the cooks, waiters and other staff were yelling at each other and yelling for managers. There was no teamwork. It broke down to an every-man-for-himself kind of thing. I was trying to encourage people by giving them pats on their backs and telling them they were doing great. Yet, I was feeling I did not want to stay in that environment for very long. I was thinking it was not worth it to me for a few dollars. Physically, I felt tired from standing in one place for that long and it was hot in there. But I think of all those things which could have been overlooked so much more if people had just encouraged each other and communicated. Also, they were throwing parsley on the plate just for the sake of having parsley on the plate. And it all seemed so phony. I had a hard time with that. Then I had another issue with my partner. She wanted me to wax the van. I think she got it in her head that it should be something I should do to contribute. I said, I will wax the van with you, but I feel we are getting into expectations here and that van is a large vehicle and it would go a lot quicker if two people were doing it. She came and did it. Towards the end, I brought up the issue that the van is big. It is going to take more time and money to maintain and it gets gets poor gas mileage. Then I questioned, why do we really need it? She said, I do not have to answer that. I like the van and that is good enough. I became frustrated that she would not even talk about it. She said, Look, why should I talk about it? We're not going to sell the van. I was saying, It is not about selling the van. I just want to talk. I just want to talk about why you think you need it. After I had thought about it, I came back and said, I am sure it is not about the van, but I am feeling upset about something. And it seems to be the van that is the focal point right now. The bottom line is that I think we need to be communicating. We came together with the group in a session and things got a little better. And we felt good. But if we stop here and say we are on separate paths, and we are just going to live in this house and not communicate, I think things are going to break down again. She seemed to agree with that, but said she was not going to run to the group every time I thought there was a problem. She basically said that she does not get anything out of the sessions. David We keep coming back to choice, and we keep coming back to beliefs. 
I have talked about how you have to retrace the steps up the spiral to go up. So maybe we can talk more about the spiral, about what the spiral is. The beginning of chapter 24 is a good starting point. Let's look at control. Perhaps in your case, there is a perceived control issue about waxing the van. Or maybe there are control issues about money or about things at work. Everyone seems to experience control issues all the time. They seem to take on so many different forms. Chapter 24 talks about decisions and it talks about beliefs. To learn this course will require willingness to question every value that you hold. Not one can be kept hidden and obscure, but it will jeopardize your learning. No belief is neutral. Everyone has the power to dictate each decision you make. For a decision is a conclusion based on everything that you believe. It is the outcome of beliefs and follows it as surely as does suffering follow guilt and freedom sinlessness. Text chapter 24, Introduction All these decision points, whether or not to go for a job interview or whether to send another resume here or there or to wax the van or not, these are all just pseudo-decisions. It is humbling to begin to realize that all seeming decisions in this world are just pseudo-decisions. Like a computer program, the beliefs are part of what has already been programmed in. The running of the program depends on what has been loaded into the memory. You may often feel like a chicken with your head cut off because the program already seems to be loaded in. It seems to be executed and running, like a robo, even though there seems to be struggles about specific things that are taking place. A decision is a conclusion based on everything that you believe. Everything that you believe in a given instant determines the decision you make. A decision can be as small as whether to put parsley on a plate or not. Friend, it seems arbitrary, but it is not. Who cares if there is parsley on a plate? David, in one sense, it is total determinism. People say that the environment determines what we do. But we are going much deeper. It is the belief system that determines what you do every instant. A control issue, which seems to be between persons, is really the first belief that was taken seriously. The belief in separation from God. Tons of substitutions have been layered onto that. To try to compensate, to try to alleviate the guilt of that first belief. There are stacks and stacks and stacks of beliefs in the mind. As I went deeper, I started to sense that I wanted to be totally free of it all. I thought, how can I be free of it as long as I am in relationships? The way I perceive them. I perceived that control seemed to be involved in every kind of relationship, whether it was parent-child relationships, husband-wife relationships, boyfriend-girlfriend relationships, employer-employee relationships, or even friendships. For me, it has been helpful to see that I have constructed this world in which I believe I am this person or this body. 
I believe that I am in all these kinds of relationships and situations. Yet it is all made up based on the beliefs that I hold on to. It became apparent that there cannot be total integrity as long as there seems to be a dependency or reliance on persons, places or things that are on the screen. How can I have a total sense of integrity if I have to answer to anything or anyone on the screen, no matter who it appears to be, whether it is the United States government, a husband or a wife, a boyfriend or girlfriend or a parent? I think you can see, as I saw initially, that this is really going to take a thorough examination of everything in order to unplug. How can I participate in the world as if I am a part of this world and be free of the world? I cannot. There is no reconciling mind with playing a game or a role there. Everything we talk about is going to be about questioning the beliefs one has about the world and oneself. The beliefs you hold about the world and the beliefs you hold about yourself are identical. It is not like you are just dealing with a little personality. The whole cosmos is your self-concept. It is not that you have to somehow be free of and transcend the little personality. It is not like there is a little mask and if you could just figure out how to lay aside the mask, you could be a true, genuine, authentic person. The whole world and the whole cosmos as it is constructed the belief in economics, the belief in politics, the belief in medicine and sickness, the whole thing is the self-concept. None of it is true. None of it has any reality. If you believe in part of it, you really believe in all of it, since it is one. There is no way to give up any shred of it without having to really give up everything. When we read, to learn this course requires willingness to question every value that you hold. Text chapter 24, Introduction. We are talking about every value. Every single value. Friend, and under every value is a belief because I have to believe that it has some value. There has to be an ordering. If there is a value in anything, I have to have ordered it, and I have to have fitted somewhere into my hierarchy, my hierarchy of high or low. David, literally, it is all or nothing. If the belief in separation is where this control issue is really rooted and the belief in separation is what seems to maintain this whole world of illusions, then the whole world has to be questioned to come to an end of this authority problem or this control issue. As long as I believe I can make myself as long as I believe that this menagerie of images is mine to choose from, then I am denying that my only real choice is to accept my reality as spirit. That is where the control issues are going to seem to spring up over and over again. The problem will seem to keep coming it is not about any specific issue of control, 
whether it be finances or relationships or the government. It is not about the system. It is not about anything that it seems to have been about. It is about me believing that I can make myself instead of accepting my reality as I was created. Friend, and it is also not about avoiding the system or just saying, I am not going to deal with any of those things out there. When I was talking with my friend today at lunch, one of the things that came up was that you are always seeing what you believe. So if you look with the body's eyes and listen with the body's ears, you are just seeing and hearing what you believe. It is not like there will be a time lag, like you will change your mind and then a few days later or a few minutes later you will see a corresponding change in form. You are always looking upon a world which represents what the mind believes and it is nuts. Jesus was saying that whenever you are upset, it can seem like, as in lessons 5, 6 and 7, I am never upset for the reason I think. I think I am upset because it is so fast-paced here. I think I am upset because waiters are shouting at cooks and vice versa. I think I am upset because they are throwing things on plates, but I am never upset for the reason I think. I am upset because I see something that is not there. That puts it into a whole new context. I am seeing a world that does not exist. That is upsetting. David, hallucinating is upsetting. Friend, and believing the hallucinations is upsetting. David, that is the upsetting part. It is not anything specific. The flip side would be, Oh, I am so peaceful. I am sitting here watching the waves come in and I am listening to the waves lap on the shore. You could even construct that as this is a much more peaceful environment than the, than the wild Saturday night scene at the restaurant. But you are still seeing a world that is not there. That is what is upsetting. The lessons continue on. A meaningless world engenders fear. Workbook Lesson 53 Why does it engender fear? It engenders fear because it is unreliable. The world, being experienced through the five senses, is totally unreliable. It seems to always be changing. There is no stability to it. It seems chaotic. That is what makes it seem fearful. That is what makes it seem... You can fill in the blank with any derivative of fear.